After I've provisioned an HD Insight cluster, I can run a MapReduce job on the cluster. The MapReduce job I'll run is a Java MapReduce job that counts occurrences of words in one or more text files. This MapReduce program is installed on HD Insight clusters. There are several methods for submitting MapReduce jobs. This video covers using Windows Azure PowerShell. For other methods, click one of the titles. Before running a MapReduce job, I need to know a few pieces of information. The name of the cluster where I'll run the MapReduce program. My cluster is HDI0102. Each cluster has a Windows Azure storage account and blob container used as the default file system. The storage account for my cluster is HDI Store 0102, and the blob container has the same name as the cluster. I also need to specify the MapReduce jar file, the input folder, and the output folder. My cluster is version 2.0 HD Insight cluster. On the version 3.0 clusters, the file name is Hadoop MapReduce examples.jar. The output path can't be an existing folder. On my workstation, I have Windows Azure PowerShell installed. Open PowerShell ISE. The other option is Windows Azure PowerShell command line. I must first connect to my Windows Azure subscription. To do so, I have a couple of options. I will use Add Azure Account. It's easier. The downside is the connection will only be valid for 12 hours. To use the commandlet, I need to provide the Microsoft account associated with my Windows Azure subscription. If you have multiple Windows Azure subscriptions, you can use the Select Azure Subscription commandlet to choose the one to use. Define a variable pointing to my HD Insight cluster. Define a MapReduce job. I need to specify the word count jar file. The class name is defined by the word count program, which is word count in lower case. The word count program takes two arguments. The first one is the input file folder or file name, and the second one is the output path. The output file path will be created at runtime. The MapReduce job will fail if the output path already exists. So if you want to run the job a second time, you must either delete the output folder or specify a different output path. The Start Azure HD Insight Job commandlet is for submitting jobs. It takes two parameters, the HD Insight cluster name and the MapReduce job definition that I just defined. Using the return job object, which contains a job ID, I can use the wait Azure HD Insight job commandlet to check the job completion, and then use get Azure HD Insight job output commandlet to check the job output log or the job error log. I have completed my PowerShell script. Let me give it a spin. The MapReduce job takes some time to complete. Processing one small data file is not Hadoop's advantage. Hadoop shines when processing a large amount of data with large clusters. The error log indicates the job was completed successfully. Otherwise, I would see some exceptions. Notice the last line here shows map output records and the record count. There are many ways to get the job output. The next video clip shows using Power Query to input the data to an Excel spreadsheet. You can also use Apache Scoop to export the data to an RDBMS. Because the data is stored in Windows Azure Blob Storage, you can use .NET SDK or Windows Azure PowerShell to get the output. To make the tutorial complete, let me show you a short PowerShell script to get the data. I will need the default HD Insight cluster storage account and container. Because I've already connected to my Windows Azure subscription, I can retrieve the storage account key providing the storage account name. To create a Windows Azure storage context object, I need the storage account name and storage account key. The get Azure storage blob content commandlet downloads a copy of the data file to the C drive. The blob name is the output folder I specified in the MapReduce job definition. The default output file name is part R00000. And finally, I use the cat command to display the word counts for the words containing there. This concludes this video presentation. 
The next video covers how to use Power Query to import data to Excel.